Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning service. If you're visiting with us, you're particularly welcome. In the usual way, there will be some tea and coffee and some light refreshments in the foyer after the service. Please take the opportunity to meet for a short time then. Today's a missionary service, and we'd welcome Gloria Kearney from Mission Africa. We look forward to see what Gloria will bring to us later in the service, and her husband Robert is with her as well. This evening's service will be here in Strand at um, 6.30, and Dan will be preaching. Just a reminder that Talk Back will take place today at 5 o'clock. Uh, for those who discuss or wish to clarify anything in last week's Bible readings with Danny. Next Sunday morning will be the PW service. There will be a retiring offering and light lunch after the service, as highlighted already in the leaflet. The evening service next Sunday will be a, a joint service, and again it will be 6.30 and Danny will preach. Could I ask all members of the PW committee to meet immediately after this morning service in this small meeting room, immediately after the service, please. It's with sadness that uh, we mention again Joe Brown's death at the last Sunday, and the uh, funeral was on Wednesday past. Uh, and we extend our love and uh, sincere wishes to Margaret and the rest of the family at this difficult time. However, folks, we're here to worship God, aren't we? So let's do that now as we stand to sing our opening praise, Come People of the Risen King. Let's stand to sing. Let's all join together in prayer. Let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we have come here to worship you this morning, to speak with you, to read your word, to hear it explained, and to understand what you would teach us. Be close to us, we pray just now, 
and help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, once again, as we come to you in prayer, we look to you as the maker and sustainer of all things. Thank you that you're a great God, the only true God, the one to be praised and adored. Yet you're the one who knows and loves each one of us individually, despite our feelings. You're slow to anger and great in grace and mercy. We are conscious of how you have helped those of us who have gone through difficult times during the last while. And now you have borne them up and comforted them with the knowledge of your peace. Help each one of us to be compassionate and loving in our ways with our brothers and sisters in Christ, being encouragers of one another. Lord, we particularly thank you for the Lord Jesus and what he has done for us through his life, his death and his resurrection. Help us to keep him first in our lives and to live for him, growing stronger in our faith and as your disciples, playing our part to make you known in our area and supporting those in your work further afield. Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit whose indwelling helps us in our daily lives. Lord, as we await responses to the advert for the community worker, we ask that you prepare the way for the right person to apply and take forward your work with Danny and others in due course. Lord, each one of us has particular matters to bring to you. You know our hearts and what we need. Be close to us now and help us throughout the coming week to honour you in all that we do. We ask these things in and through the Lord Jesus. Amen. The children may now leave. Let us stand again together to praise God in our second hymn, Facing a Task Unfinished. Let's stand. reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 and it's imitating Christ's humility. If you have any encouragement 
from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name that is a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Before Gloria comes to speak with us, let's stand again to sing our third hymn. I, the Lord of sea and sky. Let's stand to sing. <clears throat>
hopefully we'll sing the right last hymn. <laughs> you know. But it was sort of appropriate, north and south, but even so. Good morning. It's really lovely to be with you this morning. I, I apologise, first of all, because I'm a substitute, really. It should have been the, the Reverend Paul Bailey, who is the CEO of Mission Africa. But unfortunately, last weekend, Paul had an accident, and he has been in hospital for just overnight. He's home again. He's OK, but he has to take some time off. So I did a very foolish thing. I texted him the morning after he had the accident and said, is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> and you know what he said? Do my deputation in Strand Presbyterian on Sunday morning, please. So here I am. Now, I'm a member of council, so I, I know a bit about Mission Africa. We are former serving missionaries there. And Robert's father and mother were serving missionaries even before that. So we have a long history uh, with Mission Africa. And it's a real joy to be able to, to represent the mission this morning. Now, I noticed that you don't have a clock in your church. And, well, you know, when you get somebody talking about something that is on their heart, it can be hard to stop. So I'll put that there and I'll do my best to stick to my time. If I was to give a title to what we're going to do together this morning, it would be that word, together. Uh, we're, we're going to think a little bit about partnership this morning. And I, I'm going to, to read not a single reading, but I'm going to read some verses from a number of places in the New Testament. And the, the very first one, I, I thought John was going to steal all my thunder because he was reading from Philippians. But I'm going to read you two verses from Philippians chapter 1 this morning to start us off. It says this. Whenever I pray, this is Paul speaking about the people in, in Philippi. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. So there's where we get this idea of partnering in the gospel. And Paul uses this idea a lot in his letters. He talks about people working for him and with him. And that is what we try to do in Mission Africa, is to work in partnership with lots of other uh, churches and lots of other agencies and folks like you. So I'm going to try and encourage you this morning to be even better partners with Mission Africa, but particularly with Pamela and Musa, whom I know you know and love as we all do. I'm going to bring you a little update about them uh, just later on. But I, I wanted to explore, first of all, just from a few scriptures, what is it like to be a partner in the gospel? And later on in Philippians, uh, this is what Paul said about that church uh, in Philippi. In chapter 4 and verse 15, he said, As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. I, I sometimes think that's a sad little verse, that the Philippians were generous in their giving, but no other church thought of serving God by serving Paul and helping him out. Wasn't that sad? But that's our first example. You can be partners in financial giving. And I know you already know that. And you already do that because you, I know uh, that at Mission Africa, you have been very faithful financial partners with us to help support Pamela. So thank you. On behalf of council, I want to give you our sincere thanks this morning for all the financial help that you have given. It is greatly valued. 
we go on then to a letter that Paul wrote to another church, to Colossae. And it's chapter 4 and verse 12 that says this. Epaphras, and this is one of Paul's friends and fellow workers, Epaphras always prays earnestly for you. And then later on in those verses, I can assure you that he prays hard for you. Isn't that a wonderful testimony to have about someone? Paul must have known about the prayer life of Epaphras. And uh, he was able to say with certainty, I know he prays. And I feel I can stand here this morning, and I am Daniel's nodding because he knows what I'm going to say. I feel I can say with certainty that you pray for Pamela. Because I know that Pamela bears testimony to how faithful you are in your praying for her. So thank you again for praying for Pamela. She knows the need of it. She feels the benefit of it. So keep on praying for her. And let her know that you're praying for her. So that's a partnership in praying. Partnership in prayer. We go further on then in the letters to 2 Timothy. And in verse 1, chapter 1 and verse 16, we read this. May the Lord show special kindness to Onesiphorus, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, and all his family, because he often visited and encouraged me. So there's another form of partnership. Visiting and encouraging. So now I'm just going to drop that one there and I'll let you think about that. Okay, a partnership, visiting and encouraging. And you can encourage without visiting, you know, but I'm going to talk a wee bit about it later. Then speaking to Timothy towards the uh, end of that uh, book, chapter 4 and verse 13, he says this, when you come, be sure to bring the coat I left with Carpus at Troas. Also bring my books and especially my papers. So Timothy was going to visit, but he was also going to give a very practical piece of help. So there's a partnership in giving practical help. And did you know that one of the gifts mentioned in Scripture is the gift of helps? It's a wonderful gift to have. And I know lots of people who have it. So those are the the sort of the four areas that I'm going to to be thinking about a little bit as I talk to you. That's the biblical background. That's the theory behind it. That's the reason why I'm standing here encouraging you this morning to do these things because they're in Scripture. But how does it work out in practice? Well, I'm going to talk a wee bit. Um, We spent four and a half years in Nigeria, a long time ago. This grey hair is no mistake. Uh, Over 30 years ago, we were in Nigeria with two of our children at that first time, and then three. We've since had another one since we came home, so we're a a four-child family. Um, So over 30 years ago, we were living in a a little village called Etobe. We were sent there, we're both teachers, We were sent there to uh, be seconded to the secondary school. And we were living in a very out-of-the-way place. It was right down by the River Niger. A Chatham that you'll have heard Pamela mention, perhaps. A Chatham was 25 miles away, which maybe doesn't seem much here. We we travelled 25 miles nearly this morning to get here. But if you're travelling 25 (coughs) miles where it's sand that turns to mud in the rainy season and it's rivers and bridges that break down and it's ruts and it's really difficult then 25 miles is a significant distance (laughs) so we were 25 miles away and we had two small children when we when we brought went out first of all we had a boy of about five and a girl of about three and uh, we really felt cut off from everybody we were the only white European people down in that little village and um, we were a good distance away from anybody else. So we felt a bit cut off and we had begun to pray about having a a motor 
that we, so we could at least travel to visit or if we needed the doctor we could go in to a Chatham and uh, we, we, took, we went in faith and we, we bought a jeep from missionaries who were leaving. It had to be four by four, of course, for the road. Uh, and so we had this little jeep, but we weren't really all that sure just how we were going to pay for this jeep. We went home on furlough and uh, somebody came to us at a meeting that we did. There were people who knew us well from our, our local place and handed us a check. And inside the cheque was a thousand pounds, and it was enough money to buy our cheque. Now, that was a wonderful, wonderful uh, piece of financial help. But it actually turned out to be even better than financial help, because I was pregnant with my third child just before we came home on furlough. We only had got the cheque a couple of weeks, and I almost miscarried and I had to be brought uh, 25 miles of horrible road, sitting holding on to my tummy, uh, and Robert driving as if he had boxes of eggs in the car. But we got in, and that little baby's life was saved. So, you know, sometimes the financial help you give has a deeper implication. Then we used to have a mission rep in England called Fred, and Fred came out to do one of these visit and encourage things. Uh, and he came down that really bad road to where we were living. And we, we were living in quite a primitive setup. We had a little house and a half, um, and uh, at, out the back was a space where you could make a fire. And up the back was a square of concrete with tin pan round it. And that was our bathroom. And further on up, there was a hole in the ground with tin pan round it, and that was our loo. So it was fairly primitive. But Fred came down and saw our bathroom. And he didn't say anything. But the next time he came down, in the back of his truck, he had a bath. Now, where he got the bath from, I don't know. But not only did he encourage us just with his ministry and his presence, he had practical help in the back of that truck. And at least we were able to bath the babies. We used to get two tubs, two big tubs, washing tubs from the, the, uh, the market. And you would fill them up with water, sit in one, put your feet in the other. And that was how you had a bath. So it's amazing how uh, you can improvise when you're out on the mission field. But that was just two examples from our, we were only there for four and a half years, but there were four and a half years uh, that we greatly enjoyed. Now, when I was talking to Daniel about today's meeting, he heard that I had an interest in Burkina Faso. That's one of our mission fields with Mission Africa. And so he said, would you tell us a little bit about, about Burkina? I have been there on three occasions. Um, I was asked to, to do a book about the beginning of the work in Burkina Faso. And I went out then to do some research with Jeremy Nash, which you may know of uh, as well, Jeremy and Rachel. And I produced that little book. It's at the back there. It's for sale. It's only five pounds. It's quite old now. But um, if you would like to have a copy of that, it'll tell you the whole story of how we got into Burkina Faso and the story of Jeremy and Rachel there as well. At the minute, we have Anna Van Brackel who is our missionary in Burkina, and we have Ray, uh, Jeremy, who goes out now and again and does a block of time. It's sort of like a part-time missionary in Burkina. But the beginning of the work in Burkina is a, a really, really interesting story. It didn't begin in mission work. It began on the roof of a hut, a pagan man's hut, in a little village called Barum Barum in Burkina Faso. He had never heard of Jesus. But this man was planning to be a witch, wizard, which he called himself a witch doctor. And all the ceremony was all ready. He was going to be initiated the next day. And he went up onto his roof because it was hot in his hut. And as he went to sleep that night, he was 
pushed off, thrown off. I, I don't know. Did he roll off? I don't know. But he ended up on the ground beside his hut three times. And he didn't know what on earth was going on. But the third time, a voice spoke to him. And this story is in the prologue of this little book, but I want to get the words right. This is what it said. His name is Tejete. Tejete, destroy your idols. The day for sacrifices has passed. I am going to send a white man and his wife into your village to tell you my way. Isn't that amazing? Now, it took 11 years, but a couple from Lisburn answered that call. And the Benningtons, Stanley and Alice Bennington, their story is in this book, an interesting story too. Um, they ended up in this place that had been prepared and by a miraculous uh, way, they ended up in Barum Barum and they met TJT, who had held that promise for 11 years. He didn't know what he was holding at all. But when he met Stanley and he heard the gospel, he recognized the voice who had spoken to him. It's an amazing story. It just gives me goosebumps every time I think about it. I have been to Burkina. I have seen that hut. I have been in that village. And in that village now, there is a Bible college. Isn't that wonderful? There used to be a dispensary as well, but it's no longer functioning. You can still visit uh, Alice and Stanley's house. It's in ruins, but you can still visit it. And you can stand, as I did, in the place where Stanley would have stood every Sunday and <coughs> preached the good news of the gospel to the people in Burkina. <coughs> now there's a big functioning church called EPE, Evangelical Protestant Church of um, it's French speaking, so it's Église Evangelique Protestante. Okay, that's the, uh, the, why we get EPE for it. And you, could, you can go there and there's a, a, a functioning church, there are Bible colleges, there are um, youth work, there's children's work, and our missionary Anna is involved in that. But I just love the story of that. And you can read about it and get excited about it too, if, if you like. And that would be another way in which you could support Mission Africa if you were interested. I brought other leaflets there. They're free. You can take them with you. I brought a few of my wee devotional books. You can, you can buy those if you want as well. Uh, but you don't have to do any of that. But we'd love you to take the free stuff home and, and read it. And many of you will already know uh, much of the information that's in it because you support Pamela and Musa. But in Burkina, there is a great opportunity to partner by prayer. We talked about that. Epaphras, who prayed earnestly, to, to give financial support. We have two projects running at the moment to build a little chapel in a Muslim school, and we have permission to do that. The other is a radio station that is in the middle of nowhere, in a place called Gao, in Burkina Faso. And a, a guy who is well-educated and had been abroad, wanted to be a journalist, trained overseas, and went back home and runs a radio station, and preaches the gospel. And two years ago, I was out and I said to Daniel, Pastor Daniel, do, do people, you know, do they come to the Lord because of this? And he said, last year, 137 people came to trust in Jesus because of the radio station. You could have a part in that. You could share in that and uh, encourage Pastor Daniel in the radio station. You could pray for Anna. You could pray for Jeremy. Jeremy is trying to expand his work now up into the north of Burkina. It's not a safe area. There was a, a kidnapping some years ago. There was a bombing in Wadadugu, which is the main city. But he just is trusting God to keep him safe. And you, you could encourage him. We have a partnership, as I said, between Mission Africa and EPE. 
That's why I have been out twice to represent the council, to sign documents on their behalf. And uh, I hope that my visiting was able to encourage them. Uh, we talked together, prayed together, and I travelled around with Anna and saw the work that they were doing. And I hope that that was an encouragement. It's always wonderful when people from your home go out to visit. Uh, when we were there, Robert's brother came out to visit us. Some of our friends came out to visit us. It was wonderful. Um, for Anna, her family go out quite regularly. And a team from her church went out. So I'm going to challenge you this morning. What about it? You know, there are plenty of people here. You don't have to be young to do this. Uh, when I was lifting the, uh, the books on the other day, Paul Grant said to me, now make sure that they know that the teams don't have to be young people. Uh, anybody can go on these teams. Uh, could you put, up to put together a team and go out to encourage Pamela? She would love it. She would love it. And you would see the work she's doing in the Acts, see the amazing work that is built up. Pamela has been there for 15 years. This is her 15th anniversary this year. And uh, she, um, the Acts work is going 25 years. So, you know, there, there's lots to see and uh, lots to be interested in. So there you have it. Uh, Nigeria, for us, 30 years ago, there was lots of help given, financial help, prayer support, visits. Burkina Faso, you can, you can help by praying for Burkina Faso. It's a lovely country. I, I just fell in love with it the first time I was there. People are gentle, the Burkina Bees, they're a gentle people. Nigerians are a little bit more pushy, but the Burkina Bees are lovely. Uh, they do speak French, so that's a wee problem for people. And if you could pray, particularly for missionaries for Burkina, we would love to see more people take up the work in Burkina and uh, spread that work. You know, three people can do more than two can. And five people could more, do more than three can. So take that as a challenge for your prayer life. Now we're going to come um, to the last wee section of, of what I, I want to do, and that is to share with you some stuff about Pamela. I read something uh, the other day. Uh, it, it was actually yesterday in the UCB notes. And when I read it, I thought, that's just Pamela Gaia. Listen to this. Henry Ward Beecher once said, There are persons so radiant, so genial, so kind, so pleasure-bearing, that you instinctively feel in their presence that they do you good, whose coming into a room is like bringing a shining lamp there. I'm getting lots of nods. Isn't that just Pamela? She walks in the door and gives you this big smile and a warm hug, and you just feel loved. That's Pamela. And I, because I've been in Mission Africa for so long, I remember Pamela well in her days in the office. And it was a joy to walk into the office. You know, there she was, and Liz beside her at one period in their time. And big smiles all around. And you felt welcome. And you felt invited in. And I know that Pamela brings that warmth of personality to her work in uh, Nigeria. I, I want to just uh, read to you. you know, and I'm, I apologize if you already have this and you've read it and studied it well and prayed through it. But uh, this is one of the more recent uh, Josh journals that pa uh, Pamela uh, supplies for us. And of course, in her usual way, she begins with thanksgiving for all that God is doing for her anniversary uh, of 15 years of long-term service. God was good to her. He gave her a wonderful husband in Musa. Musa is an amazing guy. And he gave her a beautiful little daughter in Gracie and wonderful stepchildren. So uh, Pamela is a happy girl in uh, Nigeria. But she, she does have prayer requests. And the work in Acts, it's expanded and grown so much in those 25 years. And Sid did an amazing job 
building it up and developing it. And now uh, it also has um, work in Lagos and in Kenya now as well. Uh, and Sid has built a lot of partnerships into ACTS, partnerships with Langham Trust and uh, with many other agencies. So it, it's a very vital work that Pamela does uh, in her administrative role in ACTS. So she just says, would you pray for the management team to know God's wisdom in tackling sensitive and difficult issues? There always are issues when there are human beings trying to work together. So do pray for that. Pray for staff and branch managers as they work, um, particularly when things are economically are difficult. And in Nigeria, things are always difficult economically. They're trying to restructure the warehouse. They're trying to encourage African writers so that they're writing from the culture in which the books are going to be sold. A great idea. Pray for the uh, Writers' Retreat Centre that was built. And then the, just the distribution throughout the country of good Christian literature. She asks uh, that you would pray for Nigeria and uh, for upcoming elections. That's always a, a difficult time in Joss and the, the period when there were those Joss riots that were so difficult years ago, it was all because uh, of elections. Then uh, praying just for Mission Africa and I was interested to see these two sentences, so hear this well. Pray for visitors who plan to come and encourage. Thank you for your generous financial support. We're so blessed by your generosity and kindness. And if you give anything into Pamela's support, you take that as a thank you to you. Now, I want to, to read you the last wee bit because she talks more intimately about her family. And I'm sure you're, you're interested in just how they're doing. Pamela herself has resumed a Bible study fellowship and is thoroughly enjoying the study of Romans. What a privilege every Wednesday to spend time learning the riches of God's word with other women. It's a wonderful ministry. Musa completed a 12-month sabbatical at Kaduna State University and has resumed his teaching at the University of Jaws. He's a, a wonderfully well-respected man in Nigeria. He's also a trustee for the Equa Church, that's Evangelical Church Winning All, that's what it stands for. And that's a heavy responsibility, which needs much prayer and wisdom, you could understand that. Gracie's enjoying grade two at Hillcrest School, imagine we all remember her just a tiny wee thing. She's now in grade two at Hillcrest and enjoying that. Pray for fluency in reading and understanding and comprehension and pray she'll continue to develop and grow, especially in the things of the Lord. Pray for safety on the busy roads. Traveling in Nigeria is a nightmare. I, mean, I know that, I've been there. But God is good, and God looks after us. Uh, but pray for safety on busy roads, traveling to and from school each day. Then these are the sons now that Musa would have had in his previous marriage. Our sons, Luther, who's in Joss, and Calvin in Mubi are both doing well. We're preparing for Calvin's wedding to Joy, which will take place later this year, DV. Gladys, our daughter-in-law, along with Unan, and as far as I remember, that was the, the girl whose husband died. They had, remember, Pamela and Musa had a tragedy and lost one of their sons. So our daughter-in-law, along with Unan, are continuing to know God's help and strength. Robinson has returned home to Adamawa State, and Jethro, who lives with, now lives with us, is studying maths and education at the University of Jos. So those, I apologise again if you already know that, um, but you know it doesn't do any harm to be reminded. And just tonight when you're praying, it will just trigger some things that you could pray about. Now, I also had hope that this would work because it's all very well getting prayer letters but what I did I got in touch with uh, Pamela Facebook's a wonderful thing and I asked her if she would send you a personal message and she was delighted to do so so here it is 
fresh off Pamela's typewriter. Dear friends in Strand Presbyterian, warmest greetings to you all. We deeply appreciate your continued love and support to us as a family. Just this past week in Joss, we have had Katie Morrison staying with us. She is the latest Mission Africa rec recruit to Nigeria, and one of her responsibilities is to head up the missions program for short-termers and teams. Talking with Katie has taken me back to my early days with Kwaibo Fellowship, now Mission Africa. Little did I think when our step team set off in 1995 that I would form such a strong link with Strand Presbyterian. I think Billy Kearns has a lot to answer for. Is Billy Kearns here? He's not here. Will you tell him Pamela thinks he has a lot to answer for? And working with Liz Hampton in the Belfast office strengthened our bonds of love too. So will you pass on those warm words to Liz? We've had such a warm and loving friendship and shared so many fun times together. Even as I type now, I have a smile on my face and a tear in my eye thinking of you all. Thank you for standing with us as we labour for the Lord in Nigeria. Your support and prayers mean so much. We are blessed beyond measure by your kindness and thoughtfulness. Matters for prayer. The local government elections which were scheduled for yesterday, Saturday 17th of February, were postponed due to security uncertainties. Pray for Joss, Plateau State and Nigeria as a whole. Next year will be the presidential election, which as you can imagine is likely to be controversial. We thank God he's in control and his purposes are being fulfilled. The Lord remains faithful in the work and witness of Acts. Remember to pray for some of the difficult and sensitive personnel issues Pamela and the management team are tackling. Acts are thankful to God that God is helping during the current economic recession. Musa is keeping well. Students have just finished their exams, so now it's time to mark the papers. I know what that feels like. Gracie has assessments this incoming week at Hillcrest. She continues to develop and grow and brings much joy. Thanks again for your faithful support and love. Have a blessed service with Gloria. Well, I hope you have. And we'll be thinking of you all. Love in him, Musa, Pamela and Gracie. And she'll put a little picture, which you probably can't see from there. But I'll pass this back to, to John. You can pass it on. Now, I'm so glad I was able to do that because that's so much more personal than just me uh, talking to you. So you're uh, um, partnering with uh, Pamela. She has thanked you for your prayer uh, and financial support. And the question I want to finish with is, is there more? Partnership or working together, the title was together, involves building relationships. How can you build your relationship with Pamela and Musa? Well, here's a few ideas. Now, forgive me if you already do all of these, but this is what I feel anyway. Send an email. On her Josh journal, which I think some of you get, her email address is there. Send a letter. Send a card. What about sending a birthday card? How about the Sunday school? Sending Gracie a birthday card. So find out about things like that. That's building relationship. Are you on Facebook? I don't know whether you are or not, but it's great. Pamela's on Facebook. You can send her a wee message so easily and so quickly. Pamela's also on WhatsApp. There's another one, you know. I'm getting very trendy in my old age, aren't I? <laughs> if you've just read a really good Christian book, why not parcel it up and send it off to Pamela? I know she works in Acts, but she mightn't have the books that you've read. You know. What about a magazine? That's it. That would be lighter even to post out. Try and find out from Pamela if there's anything that she really misses from home. Uh, sometimes the missionaries like things like soup packets or sauce packets to make an, a, a dish interesting. And you get some of those wonderful little Coleman sauces. Parcel up a few of those and send them off. Is there anything she needs for her ministry with the ladies? 
Would she like a gift, a monetary gift, so that she could buy them sweets or something? You could send out a parcel. Now, there are some ideas. Send someone to visit her. I'm just putting that out there. Organize a church team. You could, you know. And Mission Africa actually would be quite willing to help you facilitate that. The, the girls in the office know about these things. Another way that you can get involved with Mission Africa, and with Pamela in particular, is to come to Mission Africa events. We have a spring conference coming up on the 9th of June. It would be lovely to see some of you there. And it's usually in the Belfast Bible College on the 9th of June. So let's be partners in the gospel because together we get more done. I want to finish by reading you a poem. It's called Together. I wrote this for a different uh, situation. It was a group of women who were going to work together. But I think you'll find that it will uh, be relevant to you as well. There's a power in together that one alone can never know. Designed by God to serve as one, that's how we live and grow. For we are joined together, Christ's glory to display, shaped by some great mystery into his body on earth today. And we are held together by bonds of grace and love, clasping hands and linking arms as we work for God above. Built together, brick by brick, standing side by side, formed into a dwelling place where his spirit can abide. May we have power together to grasp and know his love and share with one another blessings poured out from above. For there is power in together, in the one another way, serving him by serving others, living together day by day. May God bless you all very richly and thank you so much for the opportunity of sharing with you this morning. Amen. John, I'm going to pass back to you. Okay, folks, I want to thank Gloria uh, for, for speaking this morning. Uh, can I encourage you to, to buy our books and... Uh, most of us read thrillers and we pass them around. And for the artists, the most of the thrillers that we read, although they're really exciting, they're absolutely rubbish and, 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 and they're not true. Here's a thriller here that you will really enjoy things. A people prepared and it's a true story. And so feel free to take one and, and the devotional books too. Now you might be like me. I feel I'm a little bit like the queen at times. And sometimes I come to church with no money, and, and so I have no money on me today. So don't worry about that. If you want to take a book, and if you have no money, well, put a wee piece of paper, and you just put your name and what book you've taken, and bring the money next week, and we will make sure that Gloria gets the money. So if you have no money, don't worry about it. Put your name on the book, uh, not on the book, but on a piece of paper that I'll leave there. <laughs> and uh, take your home with you, we'd love you to do that. So I want to thank Gloria. Two wee things that she said, I have never ever sent a Facebook message with a typewriter, but obviously Gloria's typewriter must be really fancy. And she's <laughs> going to do that. Another thing is, I thought when she was speaking, they said, when have you ever heard of a spring conference in June? That must be the way Mission Africa do it. And if it ever might, we're looking forward to going. Thank you very much. I don't think you trust me with that watch, did you? <laughs> we'll continue our service by... Uh, our offering this morning. <laughs>
Our final hymn, folks, is We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. Let's stand to sing. grace of the Lord Jesus and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>